Hello and welcome to a new video on a step forward in analytic number theory with Super ELS. I'm your host, Trigger Zeta, and hopefully you're doing very, very well. First things first, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. And now onto the video. Uh, we recall the regular Lambert series and we denotate it with this curly L of X. You have your A sub N, B sub N. Uh, and these two are connected by the Mobius inversion formula, which is a Dirichlet convolution around one. And uh, here, the, this is just the classical series. You have your B sub n here, you have your A sub n here, you have your uh, generating function, and we can unpack uh, this right here to get this, okay? Now what we're going to do, instead of directly uh, doing an EGF transform, like we do in the uh, exponential Lambert series, we are gonna parameterize uh, x first. So we set x equals x to the r, and now we have this notation, and as you can see, I've written it out here, just for clarification, you have an x to the rm, x to the rn, and x to the rn, x to the rnd, okay? And now what we're going to do is we're going to use an EGF transform. If you have not seen this, um, I've written it out here. This is an OGF, ordinary generating function. It comes in the form of this. If you have an exponential generating function, it comes in the form of this. So the difference between the two is you just have, instead of uh, your coefficients here, you have the coefficients divided by n factorial. So to get back and forth between the two, what we're going to do is we're going to declare or define um, this EGF transform. And we're going to say, look, it is the inverse Laplace transform with respect to z of the OGF evaluated at 1 divided by z times 1 divided by z. We're going to go back to the x world so we get our EGF in terms of x. And so we can simply do that with uh, our parameterized uh, Lambert series. And so we have the EGF transform right here, and that becomes the super ELS, and it is an exponential generating function. So we put a hat here, so we, have, we denoted this by S curly L, and notice we now have our R. We can come over here and we can see our resulting series, okay? Now I'm not gonna bore you with all the, the calculus transformations and all this other kind of stuff, because they're easily verifiable. All you have to do is uh, take you know, one divided by z here, multiply one by z, inverse Laplace transform, and all this stuff pops out, okay? It's pretty nice. So we have our mid tog Leffler function here. Uh, we have a sub n right there. We have b sub n right there. We have now this beautiful uh, gamma rm plus one, and we have x to the rm, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is really, really cool. Now, immediately you could think, well, what if uh, b sub m was one and a sub m was just the sum of the Mobius functions over the divisors? I mean, this would kind of be like a parameterized, um, uh, you know, mid tog leffler function. So in fact, this actually right here for b sub m equals one, a sub n equals uh, the sum of divisors of Mobius function, this would actually equal the mid-talk Leffler function itself, which is really, really cool. And you're, you're going to see like very, very quickly, there's a whole bunch of new representations of things that just immediately pop out. In fact, you could actually um, do Fourier really, really quick. In fact, I'll uh, spoil the chickens a little bit, and I'll say, look, if you have x here, right, and this is um, Euler's totient function that makes this m, and we have this 2, this is going to equal x sine x uh, divided by 2, okay? So there's a connection to Fourier, which is really, really nice. I mean, this is, you know, imagine having uh, just a, you know, um, a nice little uh, Euler totient function right here, and you have a 2 here and a 2 here. Wow, that's like connected to what? Sine function. That's crazy. Because normally the mid tog function is really only in the realm of hyperbolics. Right, you know, hyperbolic, uh, you know, hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine, whatever. Um, but here we now have the regular trig. Okay. So I'm going to flip this. We're going to go really, really deep with this. Um, I think for most people who have like taken calc two or calc calc three, a lot of this is very accessible. If you've taken differential equations, um, you know what an inverse Laplace transform is. Um, they're very easy to look up. This is very, very accessible. We're going to go on the back and we're going to do some really cool complex here. All right, here we go. So I've just rewritten the uh, uh, super exponential Lambert series 
Um, we have our R's, you know, all this kind of stuff. I also uh, written out this function right here. This is like Heaviside function. Uh, we're going to use this later uh, down below. The whole idea is that we'd like to uh, take our generating function and put it into some type of Dirichlet like series, some type of system like that, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our x right here, and we're going to set e to the negative x, all right? And then we're going to Mellon transform and divide it by a gamma of s, okay? So we're taking the x to the s world, divide by gamma of s, okay? And you can, I mean, I, I don't want to bore too many people with all the, the calculations, but I mean, this is what you get, right? So you, the gamma of s pops out, you have mr to the s, b sub m divided by gamma rm plus one, and then you have well, over here, um, all this over there, right? So it, it's very, uh, it's very pleasing, right? Like this is very aesthetic right now. And so we divide it by the gamma of s, so these knock out, that knocks out, and we're just left with, in reality, if I were to cover this up, which I can right here, right? So makes it more nice. Um, look, we just have a, oh, it's almost like a Dirichlet series. I mean, if we, we can pull the R uh, to the negative S out, and we have like, what, M to the S, and you know, it very much looks like a, uh, a Dirichlet series. Because we have our B sub M up here, so it's arithmetic. We have divided by gamma RM plus one, uh, this is not multiplicative, right? Like it's not really, like there's not much we can do with it, but it's still in this kind of somewhat Dirichlet form. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a curly D. We're going to call it super gamma Dirichlet series. And we have our uh, B sub M here and A sub N and S, okay? So that equals uh, these two right here. All right, now this is where we go really, really deep. This is the uh, meat and cheese and analytic number theory. Uh, we're going to be, uh, you know, doing some complex line integrals. Okay, so we're going to use Perron's formula. Now, normally, if this is a regular Dirichlet series, right? I actually, I don't have room to write it. But if we just had a regular Dirichlet series, it would just be like b sub m with a prime here. Okay, um, but because we have our special type of uh, you know super gamma Dirichlet series. Um, we can infer this is more or less the same thing. It's like we can, we can do it along the same argument as if we did for a classical Dirichlet series. So let me do a classical Dirichlet series, okay? So let's uh, ignore this for a second. You would just have, um, let's see, B sub M prime. So we're gonna ignore that for a second. This would be the classic uh, Perron's formula. Okay, so B sub M is the arithmetic function of the Dirichlet series, let's say TS equals sum, N equals one to infinity, N to the S, B sub M. Okay, and I mean, that's, that's really pretty. Now, the way we can do this argument, we can, we can do this uh, complex line integration, is by this right here. Okay, so for one divided by two pi i, complex line integral over N to the Negative s divided by s ds equals what? The heavy side function that I foreshadowed. Okay, so let's look at this. One for x greater than zero, one half for uh, x equal to zero, zero for x uh, less than zero. It's kind of like an indicator function, right? It's just um, it's just an indicator function in many ways, right? So when we have this theta, or it says heavy side of x minus n, we can uh, look. The, the last term in this is going to be halved because the half over there, so we put this prime here. That's not the best notation. I mean, the, the real version is really this, right? We have theta x minus n, okay? Now notice, uh, look here, I mean, we have similar argumentation, but just mr, and in that case, r and d to the negative s, okay? So we can perform the same uh, argumentation for super gamma, b sub m, a sub n, of s, right? Because we're going to just use this. In fact, this would just be, in that case, rm, right? It would just be like this, right? And then you get rm, okay? And that's exactly what I had before. So b sub m, make sure I get this right because I sometimes rush when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So theta x minus rm divided by, and you have the gamma rm plus 1, Left over gamma rm plus one, very nice, okay? 
Very, very nice. And when you do it to the other side, you get the same stuff, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, look, uh, let's, let me do a little bit neater, negative S, there we go. All right, we're gonna call this um, Xi XR, okay? Now what I want everyone to see, because this is a beautiful, deep, deep insight, is that you have this gamma R M plus one, okay? I mean, R definitely has to be greater than zero, okay? That's fine, that's a, that's a parameter that we can make. It's fine, we, you know, we can't, I mean, if we set this, you know, equal to zero, we just have our, you know, basic definition or whatever, right? That's fine. But, you know, well, what's so fascinating about this? Like, why, why, why should we care that we got this gamma Rm plus one, okay? We want to isolate these of them. We, that's our goal is to find like, uh, you know, all of analytic number theory, we want to find B sub M prime N, or say M, let's say, but M less than X, less than equal to X, you know, like this is like everything. This is Dirichlet divisor problem. If this is the divisor function, this is Van, this is Van Mangel, it's Riemann hypothesis. Like everybody cares about these sums of these arithmetic functions. Okay, that's what we want, right? So this gives me the pathway forward because this equals this. Okay, so the question is like, uh, you know, how do you isolate B sub M, all right? This is a very, you know, big idea here, is that, look, you have gamma Rm plus one, gamma Rnd plus one. Okay, if you know uh, Mellon-Barnes integral theory, it will jump out to you, right? If you look at the um, Mellon-Barnes integral of the mittag leffler function, Again, we're going to use the top left there function. Look at this, you have gamma r, gamma r, uh, gamma one minus r, and then look at the bottom. Look what you have. This is beautiful, gamma one minus r n. Okay, well we have, if we just plugged in um, negative r, that would be the bottom right here, okay? Well, these are free variables on the top. Like, I can just supplant those in, right? the gamma r, gamma r, uh, one, uh, one minus r, that's all free, like, it doesn't depend on any of these variables over here. They're just free parameters. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my xi, xi xr, we have a minus r now, right? Because we wanna make this, and I'm gonna multiply, you know, both sums by gamma r, gamma one minus r, okay? And I'm gonna take the inverse Mellon transform. Because this right here, I, ha I would have to, you know, uh, obviously, um, this is uh, this would be the inverse Mellon transform. Right? I would Mellon transform both sides, and uh, yeah. So I take the inverse Mellon transform. What happens? Sum m equals one to infinity. We have our theta. This is our indicator function. We don't touch it because we have no r's. You know, there's no r there. There's nothing there. There's just an indicator function. Now we have b sub m mid top left their function, sum n equals one to infinity, a sub n, sum d equals one to infinity, and we have our, again, indicator function, the theta, and they're heavy side, whatever. Now we have our mid top left their function. This, my friends, is beautiful. Right here, this is what we want, All right? That's what we want. Because, I mean, for example, we could instantly uh, parameterize, right? Instantly parameterize r equals one, and that would equal our our, our, our system that we're looking for, right? So uh, let me let me make that argumentation really quick. So if I had for r equals one, we're going to caption this a little bit off, right? This is d equals one. Okay. For r equals one, what do we have? Oh r equals one, that's just sum prime, right? Uh, let's say m equals one, or well, let's write it in traditional number theory, uh, m less than x, right? We have b sub m. Oh, we have now e, m, negative z, okay? And now we have on this side, right? We have equals sum, 
uh, n equals 1 to infinity, and a sub n sum d equals 1 to infinity, and uh, it's theta, um, sorry, heavy side, I always, always get them mixed up, x minus rn d, I hope you can see, x minus rn d here, right? And then we have, actually, let me put it further down. Heavy side, x minus r n d. And we just have, uh, this is one, right? E n d negative z. Okay. Whole new uh, version of things. So somehow, right, through all of this work, <laughs> For all this nasty work, right, we snuck in a mid tog Leffler function. Okay, I like it. I mean, and we also got this representation for free, right? This is going to be very, very fascinating moving forward. I mean, again, once again, our, our ultimate goal is to get, you know, some dm uh, m less than or equal to x, right? Fine, thanks for that. Maybe sneaking in this mid-tog Leffler function, you know, and having this uh, Mobius inversion formula relationship might be quite useful. So I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And for people who are particularly interested uh, in a lot of the resources, I mean, definitely contact me, definitely email me. Um, there's a Discord. We can work that out if you like to join um there's an entry test too so you know there's that um but yeah have a great day and uh yeah enjoy the more number theory <laughs>